Howdy, in this video what we're going to do is we're going to talk about how to find the local max, min, and saddle points for a three-dimensional function. So let's go through our steps, and it's actually a pretty cool, uh, straightforward two-step process. So the first thing you're going to do, you're going to find your critical points. The way you find your critical points is you're going to take the partial derivative of f with respect to x, set it equal to zero, take the partial derivative of f with respect to y, and set it equal to zero. And what you'll do is you'll solve for x's and y's. And I'll show you how to do that when we get there. Um, that's probably your toughest step because once you have your critical point, it's actually plug and chug after that. The last thing you need to do is plug your critical points into d. And what d is equal to, d is equal to fxx times fyy minus fxy squared. Now, if your d is negative, okay, if d is negative, then what you have is a saddle point. And if d is positive, then you're either going to have a local max or a min. And to determine whether it's a max or a min, you need to look at your second derivative. When your fxx is negative, you have a local max. When it's positive, you have a local min. Now, don't blindly memorize this. Actually understand it. Let's go back to Cal 1 for a sec. When the second derivative was negative, what did that mean my function was? The second derivative was negative. My function was said to be concave um, down. And whenever a function is concave down, what you have is a maximum. And when fxx, when your second derivative was positive, then you're concave up. And if, whenever you're concave up, you have a minimum. So that's the way I remember it because that's what's going on, <laughs> you know. So let's go ahead and do an example. Let's find the local max, mins, and or saddle points for the following function. Okay, step one, we got to find our critical points. So I'm going to take fx. So fx is equal to 6x squared uh, plus y squared uh, plus 10x. And we're going to set that equal to 0. And then fy. fy is going to be 2xy uh, plus 2y. And we're going to set that equal to 0. Okay, here's what you're going to do. At this point, you're going to look, take a step back almost, mentally and or physically, take a step back and see which one of these do you think would be easier to solve for x's and y's. I highly recommend the second equation, right? Because notice in the second equation, I can factor out a 2y. And if I factor a 2y out of here, I'll be left with an x plus 1 on the inside. And now whenever I set that equal to 0, I have that y is equal to 0, and x is equal to negative 1. Now the point negative 1, 0 is not a critical point. What you have is you have a critical point at y equals 0. You have a critical point at x equals negative 1. What you're going to do is you're going to take it, each of these points individually and you're going to plug it into fx and then solve for the corresponding variables. So let me show you how to do that. Let's first check at y equals 0. What I'm going to do is I'm going to plug 0 into my fx and then solve for x. So plugging 0 into here, you have 6x squared plus 10x is equal to 0. I can factor a 2x out of here, so 2x times 3x plus 5 is equal to 0. So what I have is that x is equal to 0, and x is equal to negative 5 thirds, and so when y is equal to 0, I have two critical points. I have a critical point at the point 0, 0, and I have a critical point at the point negative 5 thirds, 0. Cool. These are your critical points. So, well, two of your critical points, because those are the critical points when y is 0. But now let's see whenever x is negative 1. At x equals negative 1, plugging a negative 1 into here, into the x, I'm going to have 6 plus y squared, and then minus 10 is equal to 0. And so 6 minus 10 is a negative 4. So if I add that over to the other, uh, well, it's, Let's do this. y squared minus 4 is equal to 0. So you have that y plus 2 times y minus 2 is equal to 0. And so what I get is that y is negative 2. 
and y is positive 2. And so when x is negative 1, we also get two more critical points. I have a critical point at the point negative 1, negative 2, and at the point negative 1, positive 2. Cool. So now that I have my four critical points, the last thing that you need to do is plug all four of those critical points into D. And what D is equal to, D is going to be FXX. So FXX is going to be 12X plus 10 times FYY. FYY is 2X plus 2 minus FXY squared. And so FXY, it's 2Y squared. And what we need to do is now plug these critical points into here. And then from there, that'll tell us whether I have a saddle point, max, or a min. So let's go ahead and do that. So at the point 0, 0. Whenever plugging this into here, I really don't care about the value. All I care about is, is it positive or negative? And so plugging 0, 0 into my D, let's see, 0 plus 10 is 10, 0 plus 2 is 2, minus 0 squared is 0. What I care about, D is positive. And whenever D is positive, then I either have a local max or a min. And so I take a look at my FXX. My FXX, that's that first term. And FXX is 10. More specifically, a positive 10. And so when your second derivative is positive, you are concave up. And when you are concave up, you have a local min. So we have a local min at the point 0, 0. Okay. Let's now do it at the point negative 5 thirds, 0. Okay, so plugging negative 5 thirds into there. Uh, negative 5 thirds times 12 is equal to uh, negative 20. And negative 20 plus 10 is going to be negative 10. Negative uh, 5 thirds times 2 plus 2, uh, I don't know, but I do know that it's a negative number, right? I know it's a negative number, minus, and when I plug 0 into there, it's just 0. And a negative times a negative is a positive. Don't spend too much time and too much brain power to figure out what exactly the number is. I don't care what the number is. All I care about is, is it positive or negative? So since my D is positive, I need to continue to look at FXX. And when I take a look at my FXX, I see that my FXX is negative. And whenever your second derivative is negative, you are concave down. And when you're concave down, you have a local max. So we have a local max at the point negative 5 thirds, 0. Okay. We have two more critical points. Let's keep on at it. So at the point negative 1, negative 2, plugging that into D, uh, plugging negative 1 into there, so it's going to be a negative 2. Times plugging negative 1 into here, that's going to be 0, right? Minus 2 plus 2 is 0. Minus, and plugging negative 2 into there, negative 4 squared. What this is going to be, this is going to be 0 minus 16, because that square would have gotten rid of that negative. It's a negative number. And because that's a negative number, because D is negative, you got a saddle point. And so what we have is a saddle point. At negative 1, negative 2. And now we just got one last one. And so our last point is at the point negative 1, positive 2. Once again, plugging negative 1, positive 2 into D. Uh, plugging negative 1 into there, it's going to be a negative 2. Uh, but plug negative 1 into there, once again, minus 2 plus 2 goes to 0. And then when I plug 2 into Y, this will be minus 4 squared, which once again outputs a negative number. And so because my D is negative, that tells me I also have a saddle point at this point right here. And so you have a saddle point at negative 1, 2. And that's it. And this is how you're going to find your local max, mins, and saddle points of a three-dimensional function.